meet artist Jennifer Strunge. She is known for creating these soft monsters that she makes by sewing together fabrics. She creates them for decorations, but they're also wearable at times. Here is a picture of her studio where all the magic happens. She sews together all of her creations here in Maryland. Monsters is her favorite thing to create. She creates these stuffed soft monsters from all kinds of different fabrics. Her website has some really amazing pictures of all of her creations. She's a very busy artist. Her monsters are colorful with patterns. She even creates sea monsters that are inspired by octopuses and squids and things found in the ocean. And she also creates space monsters and cats. You are going to be creating your own stuffed monster. You're going to be sewing, boys and girls. Let's get some inspiration from her artwork today. Your monster's body will be a big rectangle and the arms and legs will be skinny rectangles. So think about what kind of arms and legs you can make. Also, when we're adding eyes and mouths and different decorations, we're gonna be using pieces of felt. We're gonna draw some things, cut them out, and glue them to our monster's face. You can use idea sheets to help give you inspiration for different mouths and eyes and different decorations to make your monster unique. Everything that you draw today on your practice square, think about how you are going to draw it on a piece of felt, cut it out, and glue it to your creation. I'm starting by putting my name on my paper and thinking about what kind of things I'm gonna have on my monster's body. I'm gonna make four different drawings today. I already have the rectangle for you, so you're gonna go in and add the details. Start with eyes and a mouth. Just remember, everything you draw on your monster, it must be a shape, not just a line. So if you're thinking about adding eyelashes instead of just lines, I've turned mine into curvy triangles because it's gotta be something that you're gonna draw on the felt cut out and glue to your monster's body. I'm thinking about a mouth right now. It can be open or closed, but it's gotta be a shape. It can't just be a smiley face. So I've decided to make an open mouth with some teeth. I found some idea sheets for help. Now, your rectangles need to be used to start your arms and legs. So draw some skinny rectangles, but then you can add fingers or toes. Make sure that it's something that you can cut out from a piece of felt. You're not adding just a line. Then go ahead and create anything else on your monster. Freckles, bow ties, um, glasses, a mustache, anything to make your monster interesting. Even when you're adding eyebrows, we're not just drawing a line, we're drawing a shape because they need to be cut out from a piece of felt. So please remember that. Most of your shapes on your practice drawings need to be drawn with a pencil or a marker. You can choose. And we're not going to do a whole lot of coloring in, but I don't mind if you color some things in to make them dark, like maybe color in the eyeball or color in the tongue, just so it can help you to see what it's really going to look like. So it might help you visualize that. Okay, remember arms and legs need to start with try, I'm sorry, rectangles, and then you can go ahead and add your fingers and toes that are shapes. So think of triangles, think of ovals, think of curve lines, think of zigzag lines, and then you can add spots to your monster, zebra stripes, you can add freckles, anything to make it interesting. You can even add a nose if you like. All right, I want you to finish watching me and think about what kind of creations you are going to make. And this will be a plan for what your monster will look like after we're done sewing. Have fun.
To begin our stitch monsters, you need to choose a color of felt for your body. You're gonna choose two of the big rectangle shapes that are the same color because you want the front and the back of your monster to be the same color. So I choose light blue for this big rectangle shape, two of them. And then you're going to need to choose two arms that are small rectangles and two legs. Your legs and arms can be all the same color or they can be all four different colors or they can be two arms that are the same and two legs that are the same, your choice. I'm gonna show you a little fun detail you can add to your arms and legs if you want to, you don't have to. If you want to add um, your details on the edge of your uh, arms and legs so that they're not just plain vertical line, you may decide to cut curves in your fingers or curves in your toes to make your monster look like it's got arms and uh, fingers and toes. And to do that, you can hold two of these pieces together and you can just make some rainbow lines so that it looks like your monster will have two little fingers or this could be two toes, okay? That's one way or you can make little zigzag lines or triangles. If you put them both together, you can do them both at the same time. Just make sure they stay lined up. Make sure you're grabbing them and the edges stay lined up as best you can, okay? You don't want one way shorter than the other like that. Make sure they're lined up, okay? And we're using some scissors that are good for cutting fabric. We're cutting felt. So make sure you open your scissors all the way when you're cutting and you try to get the felt into the very inside of the scissors. We're not going to be cutting at the little tips because it's not as sharp as it is on the inside. So make sure you open your scissors all the way. And to make a zigzag type line, I just cut a diagonal line like that to kind of make a triangle. And then I start where the bottom is and make another one, turn my scissors and do another one. That's, those look great for toes. So you can do that if you want. Okay, now we're going to place our body parts on our monster and we're going to use some tools to hold it in place before we sew. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna open your, um, your rectangle. You're gonna take one off and so you're just gonna use one at a time, put this one to the side. Okay, and let's turn it horizontal. We don't wanna turn it vertical, okay? Our monsters are gonna be short and wide for this, okay? And you're gonna decide which ones are the legs and which ones are the arms, okay? I think I'm gonna switch them around here. And remember, if you want your um, designs to be showing, make sure you put them on this side. You don't wanna put them like this, okay? but actually we're gonna flip them around anyway. So what you're gonna do is lay them like this, okay? You wanna put your two legs on the bottom and your two arms on the sides, okay? You may have to move them around in just a second as I show you where we're gonna hold them in place, okay? Now, please pay attention very carefully because if you do not put your arms and your legs in the right place and flip them over the right way like I'm showing you, your stitching pattern or your stuffed monster, when we sew it, it's not gonna have the arms and legs in place. So pay attention, okay? Now, we're gonna take the arms and we're gonna flip them to the inside, okay? And we're gonna take the edge of the arm and make sure it's even with the edge of the side of the body, okay? And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, okay? We don't wanna put the arms way up here where the eyes are gonna be. We're gonna put them a little bit lower, but maybe not quite in the middle because when we flip our legs, they might be in the way. So I'll show you that in a minute. Make sure that your arms aren't like this or like this. They shouldn't be hanging off the edge and they shouldn't be on the inside. The side of your arm needs to be even with the side of your body. So make sure that's done on both sides, okay? and then take your legs and flip them up the same way. So it kind of looks like your arms are like hugging its belly, like hugging that monster's belly. And then we're gonna take the, the legs and flip them too. If your arms are too low and that your feet touch your arms, just move them up a little bit until they're not touching. They can be close together, but not touching, okay? Again, make sure your legs aren't like this or like this, make sure they are even with the bottom of your felt on the bottom. So legs on the bottom, arms on the top. You can play around with the placement if you want your legs to be a little further apart, whatever um, you think looks best. And when we're done sewing, your arms and legs are gonna stick out, but for now, they're gonna be tucked on the inside, and I will explain that a little later, okay? Now, once you have your body parts in place, you're gonna take that second sheet 
and you're gonna lay it on top as evenly as you can, okay? And make sure that it meets up as best you can. It's never gonna be perfect, but try to meet it up as best you can and make sure that none of your body parts are sticking out like that. If they are, take it off, readjust them where you want them to go, and then lay the top back on, okay? Now, we are going to be sewing this together, but if we sew it like this, I imagine that all of our feet and our arms are gonna be moving around a lot and it's gonna be frustrating. So we're gonna do something that um, sewers use when they are sewing. We're gonna stitch these in place or hold them in place with pins. So your table has a magnetic tray of pins. They are needles with balls on the end like this, okay? It has a sharp end and then it has the end that you kind of hold in place with your hand, the ball. Okay, you're gonna need four pins. So you're gonna share these with your group and make sure the pins always stay on this magnetic tray when you're not using them. Do not grab your pins and lay them on your desk. Use one at a time and grab them from the magnetic tray. That's how we stay safe in here. And we're gonna be very careful with the sharp end because we don't wanna poke ourselves, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we are gonna use one pin each on one arm, one leg, one leg, one arm that's underneath this fabric to hold it in place. And we're gonna poke our pin through all pieces of the fabric and then come back to the top, through the top, okay? Let me show you, please watch carefully. Pick a side to start with where you have an arm, okay? And you see how when I grab it, it's kind of like a sandwich. I got two pieces of bread and some meat in the middle. I have three pieces of felt that I want to stick this pin through, okay? So you're holding the side with the ball and the sharp end goes through the felt. We don't wanna make um, our stitch, or we don't wanna poke it way on the edge. Let's move over just a little bit like that, about an inch or so. And you want to start at the top, okay? And you're gonna poke your pin all the way through and you're looking at the same time to make sure it goes through all three pieces of felt, the whole sandwich, okay? All right, you're gonna poke it through. Then I'm using my grabbing hand to grab the top of it. Then you're gonna turn that needle around and you're gonna come back through so your needle ends up on the top now, okay? That's really tricky, so to do that, you just play around with if you need to move your needle out or in, whichever, whichever is more comfortable. And when you're ready, you're also gonna have to grab this felt and kind of bend it a little bit. I'm gonna flip it over so you can see a little better. So now I'm on the back and I'm just gonna come back through the top like that, okay? That was a little tricky. I am gonna show you again. And then we're just gonna push, I like to keep my needle up like this, and just keep pushing the ball of that um, pin so that it doesn't touch the edge because we're gonna be sewing over here, okay? Now let's do another one. Watch closely and then you can do some on your own. Now I'm gonna work on the foot because it's closest to the pin I just used and I will be holding it. So I have the whole sandwich, all three pieces of thread. And remember, I don't wanna go to the edge. I wanna move a little bit in, okay? And I'm pushing all the way through all three pieces of felt. I'm gonna flip it over so you can see. This is the back and then I'm just pushing the needle back through the front and then moving it so that the pin doesn't get close to the edge, okay? Now I have a foot to do here and I'm making sure I'm holding it so that all three pieces of felt are gonna be used when I'm poking the pin through. Push it all the way. You don't have to flip it to the back if once you're getting used to it, but I, um, the first few times I showed you how to do the back and then I have one more to go. I can turn my felt any way I want to make it comfortable. I'm holding it with one hand, pushing it through, coming back through the top. If you're having trouble, just take a deep breath and start over, okay? Go ahead and do that with your pins, making sure you have four pins. And if you're doing it correctly, you'll know because you see a ball of the pin, then you see a little piece of fabric, and then you see the rest of the needle showing through. And the sharp end is um, here pointing up, okay? So it's not on the back, okay? From the back, you just see little tiny um, pieces of the metal part of the pin. Once you're done putting all of your arms and legs in place and you have four pins holding them in place, 
The side with the balls are gonna be the front. So then you're gonna flip it over to the back where you just see these little tiny pieces of metal and you're going to write your name with a Sharpie. It's okay if it doesn't come out perfectly because I know it's kind of hard to write on this. Just write it so where uh, Miss Dalmy can tell that it's your name, first and last name, and you're done with this step.